Jesus call his disciples friends. He said, you are my friends. And that's what I want to say to you today. You are my friends. In today's message, message for August 11th, 2019. I'm still in the last months of Jesus' life. Can't seem to get away from there. I've got canned sermons coming out of my ears, but they've been all brushed aside by the Holy Ghost. Here I am, still in the last months that Jesus had to live. He cuts to the quick, going back to the commandments of Moses in today's message. Uh, the problem was a problem of covetousness. And Jesus took his disciples back to Exodus chapter number 20 and verse 17. This is not my text, but I just want to give you this by way of background. At uh, uh, verse number 17 of Exodus 20, it says there, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. That's where Jesus took his disciples back to. That would have been the year 1491 B.C., when Moses gave the commandments to the people of God. In 2019, the message is still fresh. God gave orders and those orders are just as good in 2019 as they were in 1491 B.C. I'll continue to introduce the message for the day by saying that Jesus gave a few encouraging words to his disciples, starting in Luke chapter number 12. But Jesus was asked to solve a problem or settle a dispute between two brothers. The problem was family estate inheritance. I'm going to get my Bible again here. Uh, so, This brings us to the words of our text found in Luke chapter 12. And I'll just uh, start reading right about that. I'm going to slip this in here for good measure. And you can accuse me of unrighteously dividing God's word if you want to. But I'm going to slip this in here, the 12th verse of Luke chapter 12, where it says, For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. There are some things that I ought to say 
that the Holy Ghost is going to have to teach me in this message and in every message. Text for today's message, I'm going to start at verse 13 and just read until the Holy Spirit say quit. Luke 12, 13 says, And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Jesus' reply, Man, who hath made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto him, under them, rather, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesseth. Ah, uh, and he spake a parable unto them, saying that the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully and he thought within himself saying what shall I do because I have no more room where to bestow my fruits <laughs> my Jesus I'm just going to cut it right there and submit to you my text for this message. My subject rather than my text. The subject for this message is the parable of the rich fool. The parable of the rich fool. Our world today has its rich fools. And I have one in focus, one of the wealthiest men in the United States, and probably, no doubt, one of the wealthiest men in the entire world. I've got him in my focus. Yes. Uh, I know for a fact that this rich person is concerned about the world in which we live. I got him in focus. And for professional and ethical reasons, I will not call his name, but we have rich friends, and I'm not going to even begin to think that he is a rich fool because he has footprints all around the globe. Uh, my friends, Jesus tells us to ignore the material things that a person possesses. A person's life, his or her real life, should not be measured by uh, counting up all of his or her possessions. My friends, things T-H-I-N-G-S mean little when it comes to evaluating a person's life. We generally do that at funerals. Things don't matter. We evaluate a person's life. In the parable of the rich fool, Jesus uh solves mankind's basic problem, old problem, 
1391 BC problem. Ha! This is not a message focusing on the Ten Commandments, but the neighbor's possessions, the neighbor's person. Thou shalt not covet his person, his property, his wife, his servants, his beasts. Ha! I'll bring that message at another time. Uh, but Jesus addressed that problem and he left no stone unturned. Jesus, my friends, touches all the bases in life in this parable of the rich fool. He talks about prosperity, evil heartedness, worldly dilemmas, temporal blessings, business cares, business plans, trust in riches, pleasures of people seeking pleasures. He talked also about earthly treasures, fleeting riches, selfishness. He touched all the bases. He talked also about the immortality of the soul. Then he said something about forgetting God, all wrapped up in that parable of the rich fool. All in seven or eight verses of scripture in the words of Jesus. Now, lest I do the text of injustice, I must say that Jesus refused the request to settle the estate dispute because his commission was not to assume legislative uh, power to alter the settlement rules of inheritance. You lawyers call them the settlement rules of intestate succession. Uh, and also, Jesus refused the man's request because his commission was not to assume judicial power concerning those laws of intestate succession. The man wanted Jesus to either change the laws or issue a judgment in his favor. Jesus set out to correct the man's mistake. His problem was covetousness. And he addressed that problem diplomatically by taking him back to the laws of Moses, God's Ten Commandments, and he's just a master of diplomacy, Jesus is. And he would have entertained the man's plea if he had asked for help to resolve a spiritual matter, spiritual concerns, or uh, the commission of Jesus, not judicial or legislative or governmental or, uh, concern. That's not his commission. His commission is the soul. Yes, he refused to be a lawyer and a judge, Yes, he readily accepted the position of a doctor and performed miracles of healing. That was in his commission. Instead of granting standing to the man Jesus talked about, said, that a man's life is not about the things which he possesses. 
I got to get in a hurry. In other words, Jesus said, wants us to know that our happiness and our comfort do not depend on having a great deal of wealth in this world. Or, in other words, the life of man's soul does not depend on possessions. The things of this world cannot nourish a man's soul. Whew. Is it well with your soul today? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. It's the soul of man that Jesus uh, commissioned uh, gives him jurisdiction over. Ha. The fate of the rich fool. Does that fate, F-A-T-E, stand in your future? Surrender to God. Say the sinner's prayer. In these words, dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. Would you please suck? Be so kind and gracious as to save my poor soul today. If you're not saved, your soul is in poverty. And if you talk to Jesus and ask him to save your soul and mean it from the depths of your heart, Jesus will save you right now. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, he's able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. The only wise God to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. God have mercy on the poor, rich fool. 